This session is going to talk to you about how to set up your Google document for a formal submission for a paper. And so today we're going to talk about the MLA format that you will need for a paper. The very first thing I want to point out is that the title of your work that you're going to share with your teacher should always be the title of the activity that you've been given, specific, and then your student username. That will help your teacher find your document within the Google Docs itself. So the very first thing you need to do is write your for formal header. The formal header is your first and last name, then your teacher's name, then the course in which you're enrolled, and then the date. You want to make sure that you spell out the date completely and that there are no abbreviations. The next thing you want to add is your heading. So if you are doing this on an iPad, you would need to go to view, up. Oh, I'm sorry, insert header, and then it's at the, directly at the top of the page. If you double click in that area, it should also allow you to have this grayed out bar here, which indicates that you're in the header. Where you see student here, as you can see, the name of my student is Panther student. So student is that um, individual's last name. Type the last name, space, and then you go back and you insert page number at the top of the page. If you are in the Google Docs app, you will need to go to the desktop version through Safari so that you can access your toolbar up here. That's going to be your easiest way to do all of the editing. Every formal paper needs a creative title. The creative title should be something that is based on the activity itself. So you would not write formal writing assignment. You would use a creative title that deals with the content of your individual paper. You have your introductory paragraph. The last line in your introductory paragraph must be your thesis statement. Within your thesis statement, if you're doing a literary analysis or anything in which you are discussing any part of um, an article or literature that you have read, you must include the title of the work and the author's name. In previous years, you may have been asked to include three proof statements, three things that you would discuss within your formal paper. That is no longer a necessity. As a matter of fact, college level papers um, do not list those items because the papers are not five paragraph essays. Five paragraph essays were generally set up to give you a, a very um, informal way of organizing your ideas. But now that you are higher level student, you want to start using the content to guide how much you actually put into your paper. So here our thesis statement is, in Grapes of Wrath, Steinbeck, who is the author, utilizes juxtaposition in Route 66 to contrast the productive life of the migrants to the mechanical routine of the businessmen. The entire paper is going to be about how off the author, uh, John Steinbeck, writes in Grapes of Wrath to convey the juxtaposition between the migrant workers and the mechanical routine of the businessmen. Each body paragraph is going to include support in the form of quotations. For my students, I highly recommend you use quotations because it draws your reader's eye to your evidence. If you paraphrase throughout, then the reader may not understand what is just your opinion versus what was found in the literature itself. When you are writing and including a quotation, you want to make sure that you have some kind of lead-in. Steinbeck describes this unification when he writes on 66 the traffic whizzed by trucks and fine streamlined cars and jalopies. Then you can see that the student has done an in-text citation. The author's name, space, and the page number where that quote was found. The author continues to write the paper and include more information, a second quote to back up a point with the lead-in, and then after that quotation, there is a discussion that expands on the idea and why it serves as support of the idea. You should never end a paragraph with a quote. You should never really begin a paragraph with a quote unless, of course, that quote has some kind of lead-in. If you have a work that you're reading online, 
which is common because we are a paperless school. You may only have the author's last name and not have access to the page number. If that is the case, at the end of a paragraph where everything in that paragraph is about that book, um, then you would just include the author's name in parentheses at the end, and punctuation will always go on the outside of that in-text citation unless it, the sentence ends in a question mark. Then it would go on the inside and there would be no punctuation after the parentheses. You want to make sure that the entire paper is double spaced, that it's 12 font times New Roman, and that you have one inch margins. You can do a general select all at the end of your paper to make sure that everything is double spaced and then of course that the font and the, uh, the font size and type are correct. The very last thing you want to add to your paper is a works cited page. In order to add the works cited page correctly, you should not hit enter at the bottom of all of your work. You want to go to the front of that W for works cited Go to Insert, Page Break. Now that item will be on the last page of your document. You hit the center justification bar to make sure that work cited is in the center of the page. By using the page break, it will make sure that no matter how much more you type in your paper, that will always be the last page of your document. So if you're editing, and you continue to type more here and you keep going, then that page break will just take your information to the next page altogether so that you don't have to worry about hitting enter. This also helps you with formatting when you print because sometimes when you print the formatting gets messed up. It isn't the same way it looks on the screen. So as always, if you have any questions, you should consult the Purdue OWL website for any MLA information. And then if you have any specific questions or if your iPad is not working well, um, you can ask me for help or go to the library and complete this work on a laptop or a desktop. Thanks.